Can I make a comparison to SBF and Trump through the lens of the media? So if you go back to 2016, you know, Donald Trump violated every single establishment bias that these left progressive journalist elites had. And so they basically just attacked, 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 attacked. But then you went into the election and there was a very clear data point that said whatever you thought was at, was at best limited and you missed the tone of the country. Because 50 plus percent of the country held a very different view about this person. And instead of taking a step back and, and then the left media, the mainstream media, re-underwriting and learning and then saying, you know what, mea culpa, I got this wrong, they just doubled down. And they said, no, it still doesn't meet our priors. And so we're just going to ring fence this problem. And we're going to just try to destroy this issue because, you know, we want to control the narrative and, 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 and by result, we want to control power. Now you look at SBF, it's the exact opposite. He went to the perfect elite private high school. Then he went to one of the most prestigious elite private universities. MIT. His parents teach governance of all things at one of the most elite liberal institutions in America. Stanford. They are in the establishment of the progressive left. And what happened was he took customer funds and all of this money. He made tens of millions of dollars of political donations. He wrapped himself in this blanket of a progressive left-leaning cause called effective altruism. And all of the mainstream media fell for it and embraced him, as well as some politicians, because it met everything that they themselves also bought into. Yes. And now you have this cataclysmic event, a multi-decabillion dollar fraud or bankruptcy, millions of customer accounts who are frozen, you know, tens of millions to hundreds of millions to billions of dollars lost and stolen from them. And they refuse to re-underwrite this kid. And the reason is because in order to do so, it's like eating your own tail. And that's why they don't want to do it. And so this is why you have the media basically allowing him to do an apology tour. Now, this is his second time at manipulating them. The first time he was able to manipulate them by basically being one of them. And now he's allowing them and their desire to basically protect themselves so that he can create some kind of a defense for himself. And I just think the whole thing is gross because it misses the entire mood of the nation. This is an enormous financial fraud that was perpetrated on tens of millions of people. And there's no accountability because in order to do so, the media would effectively have to admit that they missed it and they got it wrong and they refuse to do it. And I think that that is the really big problem that nobody is really speaking out about is like, well, if these folks are meant to be the last stop to make sure that there's truth and honesty and transparency in society and you can't count on them. And in fact, they're just going to reflect their own narrative. What is one supposed to do to learn the truth? Now. It reflects the institutional rot of America. It reflects every single aspect of institutional rot that every non-elite talks about all the time. But elites, when they have those labels, will refuse to give up. We I only this. think an insider could have pulled off something at this scale. Look, I mean, like, just like, the hee hee chat. Look how like convoluted and intertwined all these people are. Like Gensler's intertwined with the parents. Yeah, the parents apparently bundled a bunch of money to Elizabeth Warren. You know, he was dating the CEO of the business that he owned ninety percent in. There are all these other random shell companies that he owned a hundred percent of, where they were lending back and forth hundreds of millions to billions of dollars. Yeah. To David's point. That is a sophisticated con that you have to architect. And the way that he was able to get away with it is that not a single reporter or regulator thought to dig in. And the reason I think is because he said all of the right things that wanted them to embrace him. Just. He actually said the most uncomfortable thing out loud, which is, look, by having gone to Crystal Springs High School, by having professors, my parents that went to Stanford, by having gone to MIT... I can pull this off. That's that's what he said because he can go with those things because I'm a I'm a champion of effective altruism that I can justify any of these decisions how amoral or immoral that they be because I'm trying to help, 
you know, my brother stand up a multi-million dollar pandemic response business. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do that. And all of these regulators and all of these reporters said, okay, you get the hall pass. Now, imagine if you replaced him with some random kid in some developing country or even from the United States who did went to public high school, who went to some random state school. Do you think that they could have pulled any of this stuff off? The problem that I think this allows us to put a fine point on is the following. You know, in society, we've confused a lot of people to think that the opposite of liberal is conservative or Republican. And I think that's the cycle that drives the mind virus inside the mainstream media. The problem is the opposite of liberal is illiberal. Okay. And what illiberal means is to be narrow minded and unenlightened. It means to be puritanical. It means to be fundamentalist. And this is really what it allows us to see now. We have now had six years of data, case after case after case, where if you are woke, if you are a social justice warrior, if you have the right credentials that justify your upbringing, if you have institutional uh, bona fides that come from your parents, you get to create the narrative and you get a hall pass. And everybody else basically is at the subject and the mercy of the mainstream media. And so if you don't kiss the ring and bow down to them, they will try to destroy you or run you out of town. But if you are one of them, they will give you a hall pass. And when it's time for them to change their mind in order to tell the truth, they won't do it. And so these types of grifts will continue, as Friedberg said, because there is no check and balance without a healthy independent media. There is no way for all of us to actually know what's really going on. Guys, some person in the media could have asked the question and dug in deeper around the connections between Alameda and FTX for the last 24 months. At no so could point, have diligence at a venture firm. At no point could any person have asked these questions and found ex-employees and said, you know, are there any unseemly connections here between FTX and Alameda? There was no disgruntled employee. I mean, every company has disgruntled employee whistleblowers. But here where there was billions yeah. of dollars being made by tens of people, not a single person who felt on the outs said anything. It's well, because nations. the questions weren't asked. And then this kid paid hush money to the mainstream media. Let me but there was a chicken and egg question. We were all standing around holding our hands while the CFTC and the SEC were fighting. That's not something that consumers can be expected to adjudicate. So yes, we should have legislation that clearly defines all of this, but there were enough parameters that created regulatory frameworks where a bunch of good actors did operate in them and are continuing to do so, like Coinbase. So I don't think this is a regulatory issue. I think that if you believe there are people who are supposed to forensically examine things and get to the bottom of things and ask hard questions. Those people did none of that here. And and what's, what's even more worrisome is what they're showing is now with a massive amount of data that shows that you could ask hard questions, they don't care to because it makes them look bad. I, While regulators are, are basically fighting a territorial turf war, the media could have still done their job. They chose not to.